Transport for London is known throughout the world as a bastion of engineering, thanks to both its innovative beginnings in the 1850s and the modern technology that keeps it carrying almost 5 million passengers a day. Yet this culture of innovation doesn't just stretch to the London Underground itself. TfL's tradition for commissioning posters advertising both the network and its destinations began in the 1900s, producing work that was both artistically and historically significant. Yet it also provided a platform for female artists, who were notoriously overlooked in the early 20th century. The rich collection of work produced by the so-called poster girls is the subject of the London Transport Museum's latest exhibition. For its co-curator, David Bounds, the company's progressive views on gender can be traced back to one man, Frank Pick. Pick absolutely led on all aspects of publicity. He was a, um, he was a founder of the Design and Industry Association and he was a leading figure in London in the progressive reform movement in design, in architecture, in fonts, in uh, corporate identity. And he used to commission in terms of quality rather than on basis of gender. Work created by female artists and commissioned by Pick has gone on to be revered by both fans of TfL and the artistic community. The posters produced throughout the 1900s mirrored the aesthetic fashions of the time. For instance, Mabel Lucy Atwells evokes the early beginnings of cartoon animation, while Mary Coop, Harry Perry and Margaret Colkin James capture the burgeoning 1920s interest in geometrics and flat colour. TfL was key to providing a global stage for female artists in the first half of the 20th century. But then, in the throes of World War II, Pick died. The number of women who are commissioned declines dramatically after Pick is left, and this shows Pick's personal involvement. There's also fewer women generally involved in uh, commercial art or design in the 1940s and 50s in Britain, but there were some major names like Dorrit Deck, and we see one of her posters in this exhibition. But on the whole, the number of women has gone right down, and the number of posters has gone down too. In 1930, LT is commissioning 100 posters a year. By 1970, it's commissioning 10 or 20. Luckily, as more female artists and designers naturally entered public life towards the latter half of the 20th century, their work yet again began to appear on more of London's buses, tubes, platforms and stations. However, rather than overtly advertising the transport network, the Modern Art on the Underground initiative has taken a different form. What you have today with uh, Art on the Underground is Transport for London being involved in a sort of corporate art commissioning programme where they work with major up-and-coming uh, artists to put their work into the public domain and you see some really outstanding examples of that at this exhibition as well. Nowadays it can be easy to forget that once TfL's posters were designed entirely by men Yet in 2018, when still only 12% of creative directors are female, it's important to remember Frank Pick and take inspiration for all that he stood for.